how does this understanding help in, in life and how did it help in life for me? And what came to me was to talk about the subject of energy and capacity because that was a really big thing for me for a really long time. I, f I, was, I was building a business starting from 2009 to, to when I just, you know, stumbled across this understanding in 2015. And what life looked like to me in those years between 2009 and 2015 was this thing I was doing, building my, my business looked really hard. It looked like it was draining me of my life energy. And it looked to me like I couldn't do it like other people do it. I would go full on and then create a product and launch it out and then sometimes it would go well sometimes it wouldn't mostly yes but at the end of it I would just crash like um not just having to not just sleeping like a lot on the weekend but I would just crash I would have I would be sick for three weeks four weeks after a project and then I would, I would say, oh, every time I launch something new, every time I try to build something new, I have this start and stop effect. I get all energetic and go for this and then I crash and burn. And the whole time I was just operating under a misunderstanding, but I didn't know it. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that misunderstanding and what, what I saw that gave me my energy back, that freed up a ton of capacity that made business fun again. And one of my favorite ways to talk about this, and I've talked about it just a couple of times before, but in one-on-one -on -one coachings, I used to, for three years, rent this house in Italy on a hill looking over the ocean. It's a little tiny house, like a little cottage with a yard of olive trees and fig trees and roses. It was just beautiful. And I remember one of the first weeks that I went down there, I would go back and forth every two weeks between Frankfurt and Italy, Frankfurt and Italy. I mean, it got crazy. But the first week I got there, I wanted to get ready for the week. I was going to clean the house from top to bottom and get a fresh place to start from. And I went to work like we ladies do. I was vacuuming. I was putting stuff in the dishwasher. I was washing clothes. I was I had some music on or I was watching something like, you know, how we like to have that background noise going on. And out of nowhere, and it was a Sunday, I know exactly it was a Sunday, it just went pang and all the electricity went off. <laughs> and I didn't know what had happened and why all of a sudden I have no electricity, but I'm thinking, all right, now I have to go figure this out. I'm here by myself. Um, it was one of those projects that I did as a wife where I did it without my husband, kind of. I was like, I'm going to do this on my own <laughs> kind of thing. And so I decided to go over to the little old lady next door. And I didn't speak any Italian and she didn't speak any English. But I somehow, using my hands, said, could you come over to my house? Something, the electricity's gone off. I think I, brought, I found the word lucha, like the lights have gone off, but don't even ask me if that's a real Italian word. I still don't know. And Maria, she scooted on over, helpful as she was, and she came into the house and she took one look and she knew immediately what had happened. And she started going around. 
she unplugged the vacuum cleaner, she unplugged the iron, she unplugged the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like wagging her finger like, no, 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 you can't have so many things, you know, on at once. And she was trying to make clear to me, this is not a German house, this is an Italian house. <laughs> and the way we're set up is we just don't have as much capacity for all the things you've got running all at the same time. And then she, she went and got Ugo, her, her much older husband. She, she had um, attracted his attention as she was a secretary in his company many years ago, and she was quite younger than him. And Ugo went up to the main central and flipped the switch back on. And suddenly I had electricity again, but I knew from there not to plug everything up all at once. And so what was going on in my business? Well, and I'm just making this up. This is just, just a, one way to see it. What I realized was I, I had blew the fuse on myself innocently. Like this much of this pie was the actual work that my business required. Quite a tiny piece, like just stuff to do, you know, writing emails and coming up with ideas for coaching programs and letting people know about that. It wasn't like rocket science or a lot, but then I had like this much thinking going on about myself and how I'm too sensitive to build a business and the world is hard and I'm too soft and I'm never going to make it and I'm probably not good enough and why can't I just pull up my big girl panties and do this and like those kind of things. And then I had about this much going on of thinking that where I was wasn't where I needed to be setting myself huge goals, pressuring myself like crazy, and then believing that I didn't have the answers that I needed to go somewhere else and get them. So running off to coaches and mentors and gurus and people trying to help me build my business and just getting all caught up in like what I'm supposed to do, but what I'm not doing. And on and on and on, just all kinds of like the iron and the and the vacuum cleaner and the dishwasher and just like a ton of thinking. And then at some point I realized, oh, it's not my business that's difficult or stressful or that's just taking up all my energy and my capacity and making me crash and burn. It's my thinking about my business and thinking about myself and how am I doing that's making me feel exhausted and burnt out and taking up all my capacity. Now, I didn't have Maria there to, to pull all the plugs and send Hugo to turn on the switch. <laughs> I just had myself. But once I started to realize that, I thought, oh, okay, I, I, I start to see what I'm doing. I'm running so fast to nowhere all this thinking and I thought geez Louise how am I going to stop doing that like <laughs> what is the equivalent of pulling the plug and I didn't know and at the time I'd I had worked with Nicola Bird who I did a wonderful retreat with and we'd had some coaching and this follow-up and she said to me something to the effect of, and I don't know exactly what she said, but this is what I heard. She said, oh, well, just for the fact of seeing that, probably within six months, if we were to talk to each other, if not all of the thinking, that at least most of it is probably gone. And I thought, has she been reading too much Harry Potter? Like, that doesn't sound, that sounds like too magical for me, you know, like surely I have to do something to settle my thinking. Surely, surely if I go for more walks or 
settle my mind down. I don't know what I thought I needed to do. But something in me knew that she was telling the truth. And, and the, I didn't have this picture at the time, but now I do because it's exactly what happened. It's like when you build a mosaic out of domino stones. You just tip the first one and it just starts knocking down all the rest. And just for this, the seeing of it is the tipping of the first domino stone. And taking our hands off and watching it fall down. And absolutely what she said would happen happened. I don't know if it was six months or eight months or a year, but I remember one day just sitting here in my office where I do my work and my business and just feeling like all that stuff is off my mind. The iron has been unplugged, the dishwasher isn't running. You know, I'm just in, I'm just in my little house. And suddenly I had so much more energy and, and capacity for life, for new ideas that I could do or not do. And all of that burning out stopped. With the exception of maybe a couple weekends where I just needed a rest a day, I haven't had any sort of blowing my fuse feeling since then. So that was a really big, big practical thing in my life that changed through this understanding, was gaining my energy and my capacity back. And once I realized my business wasn't this mean monster thing that was making me unhappy, I stopped fantasizing about what else I could do instead of it. And I started to fall back in love with it as well. And what I can see today is, is that that's pretty much true for any area of our life. Wherever we've got a, the iron on and <laughs> the washer on, whether it's in a relationship or in a work context, we kind of automatically just fall back into love with things when, when we're not in the process of blowing our fuse innocently. I didn't know I was doing that. I had no clue. I thought I was being a responsible, good person by thinking all that fifth stuff. I thought that's how, how you get through life. You think your way through it. You strategize, you, you sit down, you do, and you think about where you're not good enough and could be better, right? That's my sharing on the practicality of this understanding for me personally.